So that's our program for the day. We're really looking forward to presenting this to you. And I'm going to bring Michael back up, who is going to talk to you about um, the community. And with regard to his uh, talk today, this, he'll talk about how an appreciation of diversity brings a greater understanding and increases opportunity and respectful engagement. He will talk about valuing individuals, family and community, enabling dreams and aspirations. Could you welcome Michael back, please? I might just walk around amongst everyone, I think. This is a good way to go. Um, what I was going to say is, when you think about where you live, what, well, how do you see yourself? How do you see yourself as people? I'll give you a moment to think about who Who are you? Do you, do you know who you are and where you come from and, <laughs> and that? I, I'm saying, because I, I think of myself like I'm, I, I think of myself as an Aboriginal man. Uh, I think of myself as a member of the Stolen Generations. I think of myself as an Australian. I think of myself, I live out um, in the Burbs, out at Bankstown. I live in the Southern Hemisphere. I live on planet Earth. I live in the Asia Pacific region. I live in the Pacific region. The point being is I want people, it's important that we try and um, think of ourselves on many levels because we are, we belong to many different cohorts, we belong to many different um, subsets when you think about it, isn't it? And we also work, um, obviously in our organisation, so that's another group that we belong to or cohort. Um, we also have a family belong to, an extended family, and um, Obviously, we are um, here today, so we're another group here today. It's important, I'm, I'm trying to get people, um, one of the things I'm doing, I, I have my own business, and it's really, it's, the business is just my passion. My passion is about getting people to think about who they are, about creating an inclusive society, creating a better society um, for everyone. It's not that hard, I don't think. Um, I think the resistance, I think the problems are sometimes the politicians we have, that um, we have media cycles and election cycles and we have to look past that and have a more long-term plan for what we want to do and um, work together. And uh, when you think about it, um, we, we live, um, we have an economy but we don't live in an economy, do we? We live in communities and that's what's important. We should all work together and, and for our communities. Um, obviously, you're coming from all around New South Wales here and there's many different communities around there. And uh, it's important that you value the individuals, um, who they are, and everyone has their own stories, don't they? Yeah? Everyone has their own stories. And those stories, it's important that we share them because what happens is we learn from each other. I think there's some people who want to get a seat. Is there any seats around here? Let them sit down. I think there's a is there another seat over there? Is that one? I'm not sure. So um, we are individuals. We're, I think we're responsible for our own actions, and it's important that um, we take responsibility for who we are. And obviously those you know, who you are working with children, it's important that, uh, I guess, to the children, you're sort of role models, aren't you, when you think about it? You have a great responsibility looking after them. Very important. And obviously their parents um, have a role to play, a major role to play. But uh, um, as working in preschools, schools, educators, and that, it's important that... Um, you understand that you do have a major role to play, an important role to play. Oh, I have worked, um, I guess I've, I've worked in, one of the things I have worked is uh, in community services, it was um, docs, I did work there, I could only handle it for about a year, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I do understand about, about um, the issues that are out there. Uh, I think 
there's a long way for for um, organisations and for governments to go to to work together, and I think that is happening. Uh, I see um, I see some governments working together where they're realising that it's important that they communicate communicate across their organisations, and I think the NGO sector has a very important role to play and you're filling the gaps out there that, that need to be filled. Where, um, you guys, um, I was going to say, do you know um, where you work and where you live? Do you know who can put their hand up and say that they know the country that they're on, that where they work? That's good, that's better than it has been, that's great. It's important to understand that. Do you make, um, do you make contact with the local community? I'm talking about the Aboriginal community, have you made it, tried to? It is a bit, I guess it is a bit difficult, it can be, um, because you've got to remember there's uh, barriers have got to be broken down and it's important that you've got to understand the, the history of Aboriginal people, that for a long time um, we've been excluded from society and also um, government. I guess government has a lot to do with that and the what policies and processes and, and um, that have been in play. Um, ones that like affected me, being a member of the Stalin generation has taken away. I was born just up here at Crown Street Women's Hospital um, the day I was born was the day I was taken away. That's just my history. I can't change it. I accept it. It's part of... My history is part of Australia's history. It's important to understand that story. Um, you have many, I guess... many. Ev every Aboriginal community has been affected in some way or another um, by having either a brother, sister, auntie, uncle or grandmother or mother, uh, father, grandfather taken away in some form or, or that's important to understand. There's a lot of transgenerational trauma there. Also, um, I'm thinking too, we have the, I think there's a, um, we have the Royal Commission obviously going on just up the road here and I think that's um, very important in our society to, to have these things, to have these stories told, to understand what's happened and to put healing into place and for people to um, recognise so we put the right I get the right mechanisms and people taking um, responsibility for who they are and that. I'm not trying to depress people, <laughs> I'm just trying to explain to people that yes there is serious issues at play here in society but um, if we all work together and if we're all honest then we can. It's, it's about the healing that needs to be done, the story that needs to be told and that's what's important to, to make this a, a great society to be honest with ourselves. Uh, it does take I guess a strength to do that and it's important that you know, we, we do do that. Community, it's um, very diverse isn't it? I guess um, where you work there's many different children from all different ethnic groups and does everybody like that? It's good, isn't it? I, I like it because I learn about all the different stories from around the, um, around the world that we share. And um, there's a whole lot of different stories, isn't there? Some great stories, I guess. Um, and here in Australia, we're lucky because we, are, we do live in a, a pretty peaceful society. When you look around the world, I think it's in um, turmoil in some places. It's people... I don't know whether it's people's um, bit of the Hatfield and McCoys, I think, is still at play for some people when we think about that. And uh, they can't get past some of the history they've had and sit down and actually talk about it and, and work it out. And I think sometimes there's some egos at play too <laughs> when you think about it in the world. And uh, in our communities, it's important that you do make... How does every... Um, throughout the year... I guess um, you, it's all the different um, times of the year when we celebrate all the different diversity within it. We got obviously NAIDOC's one of them, Reconciliation Week, but there's many others. We're just in um, Kong Hei Fat Choi. Does everybody know that? Gong Si Fa Chai, the Mandarin version of it. Uh, we got the Mardi Gras on the weekend, we just had the fair the other week. 
um, GLBTI or I, I think globally it's LBGTI, it's the other way around, as I remember. And uh, it's important that we, we respect people who they are um, and respect, respect starts with oneself, doesn't it? And I think it's um, great. I've been to the fair a couple of times and seen, um, been to the Mardi Gras and that, and I think it's quite quite interesting there. Um, I guess the the fair day is great, the diversity there, and and um, talking to people. I like talking to people and listening to what they've got to say and who they are. It's um, I. I I think I'm a bit at disagreement with George Brandis that no one has a right to be a bigot. <laughs> um, I think we should be, we should respect people, I think is what it's all about. And with your communities, obviously uh, the diversity is important. I think it's great. Uh, who um, loves all the different, I guess, the different foods and the different um, stories and everything that people bring with those foods and where they've come from? It would be a very boring world, isn't it, <laughs> if we were all the same? And I think it's, um, it is great. What I was going to say is um, there's some great resources out there. Do, um, when you're working with the kids, do you, um, do you include different ethnic resources in that with them? It wasn't that long ago that that wasn't included. It, it was very... Um, I was thinking when I was growing up, they were teaching me that Captain Cook discovered Australia. <laughs> um, that's a bit, I think, a bit by the wayside now, isn't it? You can't discover something if other people have already been living here and also if um, we've been doing trade with other people for many hundreds of years. Did you know um, Aboriginal people have been doing trade for many... We've been doing trade for 60 plus thousand years. <laughs> We have. And uh, just here, um, George Street, did you know that's an ancient Aboriginal track down out there? No? It's, uh, we'll, we'll think about, um, think about wherever you live. Probably the very first road or roads that are based on ancient Aboriginal tracks. Tracks done for trade, um, men's business, women's business, ceremonies, um, trade would have been ochre and other things. So also up the top up there, what I was saying is about the trade with the Massamans that went on for hundreds and hundreds of years and also with China. So when you think about it, Aboriginal people probably had the first trade agreement with China in a sense with the sea cucumbers. But it, it's, you know, that's um, hundreds of years of been doing business with them. Obviously, um, the Chinese people understand the different, uh, as with many other ethnic groups, they understand the different, um, what would you call them, the different qualities uh, that we have from our different um, products that we create, like whether it be sea cucumbers or the lily pillies or the quandongs, which is the peaches and all that. I hope that um, through the year you celebrate uh, Reconciliation, celebrate NAIDOC. Um, but it's not just in those weeks that you should be, be um, recognising and, and acknowledging Aboriginal culture and other cultures. It should be all the time incorporating it within your organisation. There's um, many things to learn from other people and other groups and it's important that we do do that. I was going to um, get people to write down, uh, do a little activity for me. Uh, everyone can grab a piece of paper, people can grab a paper for one, for each person, for, uh, for each table, they could produce one from each table. I would like you to write on there what yeah, one for the whole table. Um, what, what Native American tribes do you know? And the second one, what Aboriginal tribes do you know?
Well, oh, the, uh, to one of the other questions is, um, who are the experts of culture? Who are the experts of culture? I'll let you have... Uh, who do you think are experts in cu on culture? I'll, I'll just leave it at that and... I'll give you a couple of minutes to think about that and to write something down. The other question I've got is, what is diversity? What is diversity? <laughs> so what did people come up with? With the um, Native Americans? Three? Four? Was there any more? Five? Eight. Eight. I guess... <laughs> How many... Um, I guess that were things like Apache, Navajo, um, Cree, um, thing, things like that. How many, um, and what did you come up with Aboriginal nations and, and tribes and clans? Nine? Twelve? No, that's great. What? The point is, the reason I was asking about that is it wasn't that long ago, um, only probably about five years ago maybe, that what would happen is that people would be able to name more Native American um, tribes and clans, tribes, instead of um, Aboriginal. And that's the point I was trying to make, that we have, we have grown a bit and people are recognising that. And I, it, it was only about five years ago, and I do know that. I, I talked to a lot of different people um, when they could you know, rattle off half a dozen um, Native Americans. Um, groups and they probably only knew maybe one where they actually lived or where they worked and that so that's an example of we are learning we are learning and that's the point that um, we are learning from each other obviously here in Sydney we've got multiple language groups uh, Gringo is one of them um, Dara, Darawal um, are just three of them Gandangara um, out there too and we have clans within Sydney. That's part of the diversity here. Um, also across Australia we have um, Kuris, which come basically up from Victoria. We have Murrays coming down from Queensland. And we have Noongars in West Australia and that. So just that's some of the things to, to think about. Because um, when Aboriginal people meet each other, one of the things we first ask is who's your mob? And that's the reason. Does anybody know the reason for that? It, it's so we, what we do is we evaluate who they are and we make connections, we work out how we are connected in what way we are, you know, whether we know someone from that mob or we know someone, a relative or whatever, that's what we're, we're doing, we're working out the connections, that's what's very important to us and um, making that connection of where their country is. Because all the different countries around, all the different countries around Australia, they have their own stories the way their creation stories and that's important to um, connect with the local community and find out about these stories. It is, um, as I said, there's a lot of trust that's got to be um, created. Um, it is worth it and, and um, there's a lot, it, it takes a lot of effort. Um, it's not just by having a morning tea, it's by actually uh, a lot of inclusive, um, bringing them in, um, having honest discussions with community, learning about elders, learning about the different uh, groups within community and 
communities are very dynamic. It's important to understand that you have all different um, ideas and that uh, diversity of ideas. Uh, an example is, I guess, up the road here at Redfern where we have the um, the Redfern Tent Embassy in the block. There's uh, there's not just two um, two ideals about that. They're not two two. There's more than that. There's more in community. When I talk to people in community. Um, Redfern's part of my community. Um, I also live out at Bankstown, but uh, I work with a lot of different people around the country and that, so. And um, the other questions I asked was about diversity and what is diversity? Sorry? Differences and respect for differences? Someone else was going to say? It is. It's a difference of similarities because we um, diversity is about language, it's about ethnic groups, it's about um, gender, it's about age. We have all these different differences in that, but we also have similarities, don't we? Everyone has a family. Everyone um, wants to be part of their community and part of their family, and that. So it's just getting people to think about contrasting that we have similarities and we all have differences. It's important that we actually understand uh, both and appreciate both because the differences give us different ideas, different experiences to draw on to create solutions to problems. That's the point of it, understanding that these, um, all these different differences we have also, like as I said before, to be very boring if we all the same. We all have different experiences and even in the same family, same organisation, everyone has their own journey that they're on. Like here today, people um, come from around um, all different places and when you think going back in history, your journey and your family's journey come from around this planet that we share. So it's just trying to get people to think that um, respecting the past is important, re important to respect your own history and learn about your own history. It's important to do that. That's one of the things I, I think is very important. Um, it, it is because it gives you a grounding in who you are, where you've come from, the struggles that your family have had. And also when you think about the children you're working in, they've had um, their own history and their families. Uh, some of them obviously come from migrating to Australia. They come from... Um, places around this world that are still experiencing a lot of issues today. So um, one of the things you have to, I guess, have to recognise is that um, yeah, some children can have uh, trauma issues, I guess, is one of the things that, you know, even now um, on TV, like seeing their families and, that for, and relatives from around where the world they come, that's, uh, the world is uh, not at rest, is it's um, very, I guess, conflicts going on. It's just important that we try to respect people, you know, people do have, I guess, um, times when they're, uh, you know, they might be, um, I say, not aggressive, but they might be upset and that, and who knows what is um, at play there. It's important to, to try and work with people and work with them better. Um, I just got, sorry, I just got a mental block. It's my, I guess it's my age <laughs> getting up to after 50, sorry about that. Uh, that's one of the things about diversity of age. When you get older, you know, you do have these little mental blocks. Um, you have to be honest, you know, that's that, uh, not like when you're young, but then again, when you're young, you, you know, think um, that you're bulletproof and that's not true either. <laughs> so it's important that we, um, I guess, do uh, pass on our knowledge to the younger generations and that's important too, that um, we do give them our experiences but we do it in a way that we're not lecturing to them. It's important we always um, not try to lecture to people to get people to try and think for themselves and try to get them to... Uh, when I talk to teachers I, I, I say to them it's important you try to get... As a teacher you should teach people to teach themselves and to learn for themselves, make their own... Um, see the world 
um, look past the words and look at the actions, I think, is what you've got to do. And the other thing is about um, who are the experts of culture? What do people come up with? The people you're living that's right. It's the person in front of you. <laughs> that's the point I was trying to make, that the person in front of you is the expert in their own culture. Everyone has culture. And um, it's important that we respect that, um, try and learn from it, and as I said, learn the stories. There's many great stories. I, I was lucky. I grew up with a lot of different um, people. I grew up with Greeks, Italians, um, Yugoslavs, but that country doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> um, Kiwis, Chinese, um, French, a lot of different people. And I like listening to their stories and I like going around their places. Um, when I was young and I liked sampling all the different foods that they had as a kid and that was, you know, some of it was strange to me. Um, and some of their customs are a bit strange, but I got to learn why why grandma wears black after grandpa died, um, you know, very Greek thing, and understand why why things happen and why you know, it just puts more of a, I guess, a context on um, who you are and if you can learn about the people around you, it makes more of a sense to who you are and puts things in perspective. And that's what I, I, I'm about and trying to get people to do. We've still got, what, five minutes? I'll take a couple of questions if anyone has some questions. Probably everyone has a lot of questions. Or anyone wants to say anything? Don't, don't be shy, speak up. Yeah, that's the language. Right, but that's the language. Now, I know there's been some contention in the newspaper saying that you know, we want to um, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land. Because of all the stories that are going around, who, who do we find out from? What is the correct, what are the, who are the, the terminology you use? Well, who are the people? I've, who are the language? What I've got is, um, there's a couple of ways. To, to deal with this. I've got a map here that I'll leave here for you guys to have a look at during the day. Um, it's of New South Wales. I'll put that out the back out there. Um, what we have there, we've got the uh, Aboriginal Land Councils and we also have the groups that are on there. Obviously there's a bit of contention where the boundaries are because they did change and everything a little bit, you know, through um, the interaction and that. But that's just to start, it's just um, to understand that you can acknowledge the traditional owners just by acknowledging the traditional owners. You don't have to say um, that, because there is some contentions around Sydney. There is, I guess there is some very heated arguments, one might say. <laughs> yes, the Darug people, that's a very... Uh, well, D Darug and the land councils is a bit of a... Um, can I say contention there of what's going on and ongoing contention and that and there's been a, a legal challenge and, and um, where they tried to claim native title but it failed in court so um, what I suggest is to make contact with the local Aboriginal organisations like you've got land councils and that um, over on the northern side there you've got obviously Garrigals over there um, and you've got KMA Canigal and put a Google out with the three around the manly and that. But you can always just be generic, I think, in a point too, if there's a contention that, so. Is that okay? <laughs> that is from the New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council. Um, they're out at Parramatta. What they are is basically, um, they're an administrative body above the land councils. Each place in New South Wales actually has a land council and in Sydney we have five here. So yeah, that that's, um, produces those maps. They don't actually own land. Um, the local land councils are all the landowners and the ones who are the custodians. Yeah, you've got those too. Um, you can, there's another map that's created by AITSIS that... Um, 
the Australian one. Yeah, that's the New South Wales one that's produced here. Yeah, it's the one um, produced by New South Wales. But what I was um, here this morning, I wasn't just talking about Aboriginality, you know, I was trying to get people to think about diversity and about inclusion and how important it is because think about it. We live in a, a global village, as they say. It's important to understand the um, if we are going to engage the world correctly, we have all the people here around us from all the different countries. And that, when you think about um, where we live, so it's important to learn from them and we can learn, before we even step off these shores, we can, um, there's some great knowledge that we can have so we don't make as many state mistakes as other countries. I'll, I'll leave you with that there anyway to think about. <laughs>